Hello! Today I'm going to take a look at these old Holland classic watercolours. They are artist grade. I have wanted some of these for years and I've never been able to really justify buying them because they are not available in Australia that I can see and I ended up buying these while I was in Greece. You can get them on Jackson's Art so I'll link those in the description below as well but I am absolutely dying to try these out so let's do that today and let's get into it. So these come in half pans and also tubes. I decided to go for tubes. They are 6mm tubes so they're quite small and they weren't exactly cheap but I decided since they were in front of me that I had to choose some. Now in my infinite wisdom I did not prepare in advance. I should have written down the colours that I wanted before we left but holiday brain took over and I realised when we got there that I had no clue so I just kind of had to guess and figure it out on the spot. I really hope I've got a decent selection of colors here. I'll show you the ones that I have in no particular order. I've already had to switch to voiceover because I realized after I'd done all this that I had been mispronouncing that word. It is not Chevignen. I think it is Skavening it. Green Deep. I do apologize. My Dutch is non-existent. So we're just gonna have to live with my Aussie accent. And there's plenty more with this name on it. I think it's actually a place name. But anyway, I shall struggle gamely on. And this one is S Yellow Deep. S for scavening. And because I just know I'm not going to be able to say that word twice the same way. And of course I had to pick S Orange as well. I was just basically going off names here. Not really looking at the pigments because the pigments aren't actually on the tube. Yay, something I can read. Old Holland Green Light. I was looking on a swatch card when I picked all of these colours. I also have an Old Holland Bright Red. And up next as I pull it out of the box is S Rose Deep. I think I was pulled in by the label on the tube. I also liked the look of Brilliant Pink. I found Brilliant Pink in a few different sets lately. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with it. And then we have S Blue Light. I'm pretty sure this has got white mixed in with it. And the darkest color that I chose is Van Dyke Brown Castle Extra. I thought that sounded rather intriguing. I've got some more blue here. This one is S Blue Deep to go with that S Blue Light. This funny colour is Flesh Ochre. It looked quite unusual on the, the swatch card so I thought I'd pick that one. I do love a turquoise so we have turquoise blue deep. And this next one, Spot the Error, it will come up later but this is S Yellow Light. And last in this box is Old Holland Violet Grey. I thought that one sounded quite interesting as well. So overall here I chose 14 tubes. I think I've got a fairly interesting array of colours. We will see more on this when I swatch them out. But firstly I wanted to pour them into half pans and I found this old tin in my stash. It's the last one I have. Those tins have gotten really expensive on Amazon so I cleaned this one out because I'd been using it for something else. I really didn't want to have to buy another one. Thankfully I also have rather a lot of unused half pans in my collection and I was able to find enough of them to fill with these tubes. Now none of the pigment information is actually on the tube itself but Nick actually thought to pick up a brochure which I did not think of <laughs> but I was able to go in with a highlighter and find all of the colors except for flesh ochre. I cannot see that anywhere on the brochure and days later I still haven't found it. So your guess is as good as mine as to what pigments are actually in it. I'll see if I can find this chart or something like it online and I'll post it in the description below so that you can check out all of the pigment numbers as well. It even has a line showing all of the pigment names to match with the numbers which is really fantastic. Normally I'm looking these up on websites like Handprint. And I don't think I remembered to open the book but inside is a full chart of all of the colours. Hold on, I found another bit of footage that I took which does show it. I totally forgot I did this. I don't know why it's not in the correct order. But here we go. It is a massive chart of colours. They have so many in their range. And you could probably see why it was really hard to pick just 14 paints. But I got there eventually with choosing them. And now I'm just going to write some little labels on these half pans so that I don't forget what they are. And I'm using a permanent sharpie for that. A fine point one. I just write the name of the paint on here and I don't bother putting on pigment numbers because you can't see them when they're in the box anyway. But I did the same thing for all of the colors so that they're clearly labeled and are easy to find in the future if I move them around. And now for the messiest bit, the squeezing and pouring of paints into half pans. Actually these tubes weren't too bad although some of them had paint in the lids. 
but I find smaller tubes are easier to pour than the large 15mm ones which usually tend to explode everywhere. These ones were a little more behaved. That brilliant pink is such a pretty colour. I loved it already and I hadn't even painted with it. But I was trying to pour them in some semblance of water to get an idea of where I might want to have them in my palette. Though I did end up changing a few of them around at the last minute, as I usually do. It's not always easy to tell what the colour is going to look like just when it's poured out. Sometimes it does need to be swatched in order to get the correct shade. But most of these looked really bright. The violet grey is another one of those. It's actually a really pastel-y coloured purple. I think it's gorgeous. Like a lavender or something. I was blithely squeezing these paints out without a care in the world, not realising that a spanner was about to be thrown in the works in the form of this S yellow light. You could see here that it's not pouring the same way as the other paints. It's a lot stiffer and more worm-like of a consistency rather than the runnier consistency of the other watercolours. And I was thinking that's really strange. And right now the smell hit me. A very distinctive linseed smell. Because that's not a watercolour. That's an oil paint. It even says oil colours on the tube, but it was hanging on the rack mistakenly with all of the watercolours and neither Nick nor I noticed that at all. I am so mad. I mean look, they're the same size tube as well. Who puts oil colours in such a tiny tube? We later found out it might be a sample size tube, but I have all this oil paint that won't go back in there so I've wrapped it in glad wrap for now and I'll have to use it soon. I'm so annoyed about that. There's not much I can do about it either because I can't exactly just drive down the road to take it back. Fortunately none of the other colours were oil paints and I was able to pour the rest without any more drama. But this is the second time this has happened to me where I've bought paint from overseas and it ends up being something completely different. I also did this in New Zealand last year when I purchased Schmincke Random Grey thinking it was the watercolour and it was actually an oil paint. I mean, how do I do this? It's got to take a special talent. Especially to do it not just once, but twice. What am I like? But it's time now to swatch the 13 colours that I have. And I was already completely over it, so I didn't write any of the pigment numbers or other information down. I started painting the colours in side by side and made a huge mess almost straight away. Just this whole thing was a disaster from start to finish. So I do apologise that my swatch is nowhere near as thorough as I normally do. We're just going to look at the pretty colours today. At least I still have one yellow, although this is the deeper one and I kind of wish it was the other way round that I had the lighter yellow as a watercolour and the deep one as the oil paint. Oh my gosh, I'm just never going to get over that, at least not for a long time. But what I didn't realise until I was actually painting these out, that I've chosen a really botanical looking set of colours. They are either very bright or pastel colours. I thought flesh ochre would be earthy but it's actually a quite a bright orange as well. And then the only earth or dark tone that I have is that Van Dyke brown which will be coming up shortly. It is most definitely not what I would consider to be a standard set of colours. I'm so glad I chose the Van Dyke because I would have nothing that was dark otherwise. This is a gorgeous brown, I really love it. I used that one quite a lot in my upcoming painting which we'll see soon but I'll just finish out swatching these colours so you can see them all together. I can definitely say that it is much harder to make choices when travelling than it is going to local shops after I've done my research online and normally I'd write out a list. I went into this totally clueless. But in the end I'm actually really in love with this colour palette. It's so happy, bright and summery. I just wish I had a 14th colour. It would have originally been that really bright lemon coloured yellow. Now I'm thinking what would be better would be a dark purple or an indigo. It needs another shadow colour I think. So I probably am going to buy at least one more on Jackson's Art at some point. Let me know in the comments which colour should I choose. I may decide to fill up the middle section of that palette too so you can give me a few suggestions if you like because there's room for I think six more colours in total. I think it's time to do some painting anyway so we can see more how these colours work together. I had printed out this little picture of a fly agaric mushroom and I thought I'd paint it today because even though this is a summer palette it is most definitely not summer in Australia. The weather has been so gloomy. We haven't had a decent sunny day in weeks and I'm really feeling it. 
When I was painting this, I was feeling so depressed and it was quite a struggle to do anything, but I did try to forge ahead because I usually find that if I do something, it gets me out of that miserable funk. Otherwise, if I just do nothing, I'll feel worse. Normally, I get a bit of seasonal depression around June, but this year, it's a month later and as soon as July arrived, so did the winter blues. But it's alright, I'll get over it, I always do. You can see that the paints are running into each other and that's because I was feeling quite grouchy and rebellious. I did not want to wait for the paint to dry so I just let the paints run into each other and I did go back later to fix this up a little bit. Actually, when I get into this kind of mood, I find I've become a lot more fearless and adventurous because I'm feeling so low, I'm just like, well, whatever, I'm just gonna throw the paint on the paper and see what happens. I was dropping in different colours, mostly the flesh ochre and some of the greens along with that dark Van Dyke brown in the background, letting them run together and I really needed to let that dry before I did any more so I moved down to this little empty section of paper and just started painting in some really loose flowers using some of the different colours and blending them into each other. I wasn't in the mood really to use reference photos aside from that fly agaric mushroom so I just made these up and I was trying out some of the different colours. It's like an alternative method to swatching really doing this. I just used one brush as well, this dagger brush, for pretty much everything on this page. But this was quite relaxing and it did cheer me up a little bit just seeing all those really lovely colours. I have to say that I'm not disappointed with the old Holland paints, thank goodness. Because they're paints I've wanted to try for a while, I was really hoping I wasn't going to be disappointed or disillusioned by them. They are really lovely, beautifully vibrant and pigmented, and it just makes me want to own more of them because I love all of these colours, and I think I could use a few more just to flesh out that palette and make it a bit more versatile. Once I had finished filling in the page with all of my abstracts, I went back to this painting and I'm going over everything with a second layer so I can get a lot more dark value into that background, especially the paints layered on top of each other really well and you could see how vibrant they're getting with a couple of layers. I will definitely be revisiting these paints because I do want to buy more of them and I'll show you when I update that. It probably won't be for a while because they're not cheap, but I do have some vouchers in my Jackson's Art account, so I guess I'll be using those to buy a few more tubes of paint. Like I said, let me know which colours you think I should get. This video ended up being not at all as I was planning it to be. I was going to do a whole bunch of different paintings, but I just wasn't in the mood for anything complicated or detailed, so I just went with this. I'm using some acrylic gouache to dot on some white fly agaric spots, and I think this really brought the whole painting together. I actually like how this came out. It was a fun little painting and I enjoyed it more I think because I wasn't putting any pressure on myself. Just to be able to do anything when I'm in this kind of mood is a real win. And I just wanted to take that pressure off myself so I wasn't making myself feel worse. Quite often when I do something completely random like this it ends up being so much better than I first expected it to be. And I am very glad to have this page spread in my book now. I added in some white dots to the centres of the flower too. And here's the finished page. Not too bad in the end. That's pretty much all I have for today. That oil paint just threw me completely and the whole video just didn't go according to plan at all. I was going to do a whole page spread as I normally do in this book but it just wasn't happening and instead I have one page side but that's better than nothing. And like I said, I'll probably come back to the old Holland watercolours at a later time but I wanted to do a review on the colours that I have now. So far so good, I think they're really lovely and I have nothing negative to say about them. They're very nice professional watercolour paints and they do everything that I expect them to. Thank you so much for watching, I hope it was kind of helpful although maybe not quite as much as I would have liked it to have been. This is most definitely more of a first impressions kind of video. If you enjoyed it though, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and you might want to click that subscribe button for more videos. You can also check out these videos that I've made if you like it as well. I hope you're having a fantastic day out there and if you're in the sunshine, I hope you're enjoying it because I'm missing it desperately. I'll swatch you later. Bye!